Bushfires continue to burn out of control in southeastern Australia, and officials say the situation is only going to get worse. The scale of the fires is stretching resources on the ground, and there are clearly communities that need additional help. Conditions are ripe for fires to spread. High winds, high temperatures, and the ground is extremely dry. Officials are doing everything they can to contain the flames, including calling in the military. Laura McQuillan is on this story for us. Laura, take us through some of these latest developments. Well, some news just coming out of Australia in the past hour or so, Jen. Uh, hundreds of homes reported destroyed in New South Wales just overnight. Five firefighters injured in two states, suffering burns and smoke inhalation, trying to battle the flames overnight. You're looking there at Kangaroo Island, and there's confirmation that two men died there, a father and son trying to escape in that vehicle when it was overrun by flames. A third of that island off the the southern coast of Australia has now burned. The mayor described it as looking like a nuclear bomb has gone off and you can see why. There's very little left there and now the death toll is at 23 with uh, at least 1,500 homes if not more destroyed and this is just the start of the fire season. There are at least eight weeks to go and officials are warning things are going to get much worse, Jennifer. We know the firefighters there are stretched thin already. They are exhausted. What kind of extra help are they getting, if any? That's right, because these are volunteer fire brigades. They have so little resource. So the Prime Minister of Australia, Scott Morrison, yesterday announced that the government will spend $20 million leasing more firefighting planes, something that fire uh, crews have been crying out for for 18 months now. Also sending in 3,000 army reservists to help with the effort to evacuate people, to establish fire breaks. But just seeing a short time ago, the Rural Fire Service Commissioner saying he wasn't warned about that news and he's disappointed by it. He says it's going to make firefighters' job even harder because now they've got to figure out what jobs those reservists are going to do and how they'll work alongside firefighters. He's communicated that to the Prime Minister's office and that's just another blow to the government in Australia already facing so much criticism for its stance on climate change, for the Prime Minister holidaying in Hawaii as the country burned. You saw him just days ago with firefighters refusing to shake his hand. So things going from bad to worse, not just for the government, but in terms of those fires as well. And of course, we are expecting things to get even worse in the days and weeks ahead. Thank you, Laura. And we will talk more about anger against the government with my next guest. Peter Logue is a former journalist. He has fled his home in a small town near Cobargo, where he organizes a folk festival every year. Joining us now from Canberra. Thank you so much for your time, sir. I'm happy to talk to you. Uh, let's start by where you are now and what the conditions are like. Uh, I'm in Canberra. Uh, it's uh, about 8 o'clock, just after 8 o'clock in the morning. Outside looks like a nuclear winter, or maybe I should say a nuclear summer. Yesterday it was 45.5 degrees. Uh, that is astonishing. Uh, I lived in Canberra for many years. I've never seen weather like this. Um, we're we're a, a wealthy, developed country, and what we're seeing now is the destruction of, uh, of a coastal economy that has been much loved by Australians. It's where they've holidayed for many years. And we're seeing the destruction of a coastal ecology uh, where uh, rainforest, where forests and uh, animals uh, are just disappearing and being wiped off the map. It is a disaster of uh, biblical proportions. Peter, as you were answering, we were watching some images of people walking aware, around wearing masks over their face. Is this, it looks like Beijing. Is this becoming the norm there now? I'm, I'm wondering what it's like when you go outside. Well, even inside, my, my father-in-law, who has a touch of, uh, who has breathing problems, is downstairs wearing a respirator in the house. And my wife is wearing a P2 mask. Um, I'm thinking of taking up smoking to improve my air quality. <laughs> it's just, uh, it's just appalling, absolutely appalling. Um, and as, as your pr previous uh, reporter said, it's only going to get worse. Um, I must say that overnight, I, I have a, a, a next door neighbor in the property next to me, I live on a five-acre uh, property just outside of Cabago, uh, on a, a hill overlooking a beautiful valley. And I was uh, talking to my neighbour by email this morning. It's the only way to get in touch with him. And he said that uh, conditions have eased, but uh, my house went very close to being uh, burnt down last night, as it did on New Year's Eve. And I had to send a friend up there, my fire 
fighting system failed, the pump failed. Wow. Um, I, I made a mistake when I got out, but I mean, that's been fixed up. I gather you had sprinkler system already in place because I want to ask you about the fact you have written, uh, co-written an editorial in The Guardian and you speak about anger towards the government and the fact that many of you have been bracing for an event like this for years. Uh, as I say, my next door neighbor is a former head of forestry in, in two states here. He has he had received a national award for it. He's a brilliant man and, and a lovely man. He warned us about this three years ago, and we started preparing our defenses then by burning back some of the property, by putting in sprinkler systems, by putting in pumps, by making sure we always had water in a rainwater tank. Uh, he predicted all of this. But what's quite criminal is that in April... Uh, 20 fire, 20, over 20 firefighting chiefs uh, wrote to the Prime Minister, Scott Morrison, saying that they wanted to talk to him, that they were absolutely terrified about what was going to happen. He didn't take that meeting. In my view, that is a, that is a criminal act, uh, and uh, uh, he will suffer the consequences of that from, from the voters if he gets to the next election, that is. Mm -hmm. We have seen images of uh, firefighters, for example, refusing to shake the hand of the Prime Minister as he toured. I, I want to get back to your life. I'm happy to hear that your property for now sounds like it's okay. You organize a folk festival, I mentioned, every year. I know that must be uh, a lot of work and a highlight for the town where you live. At this point, is that just a, a wild dream, returning to that kind of normalcy? Tell me about what you're thinking. And the people, the people. Well, uh, a couple of a couple of points here. Uh, nearly 15 of our of our team leaders at the festival. It's run entirely by volunteers. Nobody gets paid. It gets about 6,000 people over a weekend. It gets um, international folk acts. Quite a lot from Canada every year, actually. Uh, and um, 16 of them have lost their houses. Uh, a lot of them have been evacuated to Canberra and we're meeting up at 11 o'clock this morning to have a preliminary chat about what we do next. Um, we would love to put the festival on. It's supposed to be at the end of February. We would like to make it a festival that uh, basically uh, that where all of the profits go to the reconstruction of our beautiful village. Um, but we don't know yet whether we have the physical and emotional capacity to actually make that happen. Um, we are all, there's no power and no communications in the area we live in. We have two of our hottest months coming up. So uh, making a decision now, or making a declaration now that we will go ahead is a bit premature. So we will, we're just going to have to think this through. Peter, I have to leave it there for time, but I must say, looking at the images, you know, the rest of the world is horrified, but but hearing uh, the story from someone with his personal connection to this as you is so important. Again, thank you so much for your time today, Peter. We wish you the best.